welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Over the past few years, 3D printing has become a popular technology that allows individuals to design and manufacture their own custom parts. However, most people don't own a 3D printer or CAD software, and therefore in this video I'm going to show you how to use a free online application called Tinkercad and an online 3D printing service called 3D Hubs so that you can design and manufacture your own bespoke plastic object. Now, specifically, I'm going to be making a case and mount for a Raspberry Pi that allows us to mount this Noctua fan on that single board computer. But I want to stress the key point about this video is to demonstrate how you can join the 3D printing revolution without investing in your own hardware or software. So, here we are on the website for Tinkercad, where you'll need to create an account, and I've already done that, so I can just log in in the normal fashion. And we'll arrive in Tinkercad, where, as you can see, I've already been hard at work creating objects. We'll look at some of these in a second. But I thought we'd start out by just creating a new design. And a good tip here is to press F11 in this screen to maximize the browser window, because you can't do that when you get to the main CAD workspace we're about to enter. So, and I'll click on Create New Design. And it's worth pointing out when you first sign up for Tinkercad, when you first log into the system, it will take you through some tutorials which are very good to get you used to using the thing. But to give you the very basic idea of what's going on here, you've got a work plane on which you build objects. There's a little a cube up here you can click and hold to uh, manipulate that. Or you can come down here and right click on the desktop and move it around yourself. And there's buttons here to do things like uh, fit things in view, home view, etc. And all the objects you build in Tinkercad are built from basic shapes. You can see down here lots of basic shapes. So I could take, for example, a box and uh, drag that off into the workspace. And then I can use little handles on it to uh, resize it, to move things around, to turn it into exactly what we want to have. And as you'll see here, any shape can be a solid or a hole. And a hole is basically a, an object which will cut things out of other objects. So if I turn that into a hole, it goes into a transparent type of view. And in fact, I've found it's often easiest to position objects as holes and then turn them back to solids when you've done that. So there's one object. We'll now take a cylinder. This cylinder up here is a hole. We'll drag that onto the, uh, the screen. Let's drop it onto there. And then maybe make a copy. I'll press uh, Control D and just to uh, push that across to make this bit more exciting. And if I now select all those objects by clicking and dragging and go up to here, select Group, we've now got an object we've built which has obviously got some holes in it. And let's uh, use that thing to uh, fit it in the view. Doesn't that look nice? It's worth pointing out we've also got a ruler, which is very handy. You can drag that down to the workspace, and we'll click it down about there. And that means now if we click on the object or any other object and start moving things around, you've got all sorts of dimensions coming up to make it clear what's going on. You've also got very good snap-to-grid functionality here, and you can change the uh, resolution of that grid with this little selector down here. Final thing I'll note in this very quick overview is it always gives your objects very strange names when you create them. I think we'll just call that test. That is, I think, much better. But now, having shown you the basics of Tinkercad, let's look at the objects I've created, which we're going to print out using 3D hubs. So uh, let's go back to those. And you'll see test has appeared here. It gives you nice little previews of objects. And this is the, the baseball which we're going to be working. If we click on Tinker this, it means open it. Took me a second to realize that one, and that will load it back in. If we just uh, center it in the view, this is the baseboard. Basically, our Raspberry Pi is going to sit on top of here. There's holes through there. You can just about see the holes. I think they are there. And uh, this is built out of objects grouped together. So if I go to the object and I uh, ungroup it, you'll see there's some holes which were used to cut it. Those holes themselves were also made of other objects. The baseboard was made of uh, other objects. You'll see this little. Uh, cylinders here which actually do the risers, and the baseboard again there is built out all the things as well. But I'll just uh, go back out of that, put the object back together as it were, so it's all working properly, and we'll now export it for 3D printing. And to do that we go to export, and uh, normally for 3D printing you want what's called an STL file, so I'll click on STL, and uh, there we are, we're going to save it into that uh, folder, that's absolutely fine, click on save, and that thing is now exported and we'll uh, close down that to keep our screen tidy. Let's just go back to the main screen again, and uh, here we are. I'll show you the, uh, the top. Uh, you'll see here if I click on the object, rather than clicking on Tinker This, uh, we can 
just move this thing around. There's a nice little uh, options thing there. We can make, say, a copy of it. That can be very useful, making a copy of an object to turn into something else. Uh, we can delete it if we really want to. We won't do that. If we just click on an object there rather than clicking on Tinker This, it'll open it up, but uh, just so we can have a look at it. And uh, that's a static view. You can look at it in 3D if you want to. It'll have a little think, and we can uh, move around. There it is, our nice little object. Again, this was built out of basic shapes. And uh, here we can actually, if you really want to, 3D print directly to certain services, which are these here, which we're not going to use in this video, but they are available. But we've also got in here, again, the download option to click on download. And again, we'll create ourselves a, an STL file. So we'll do that and uh, save that. And we're now ready to do our online 3D printing. So here I am back again on the website for 3D Hubs which is a service which connects together people and companies who have 3D printers with people who want to get things printed out. As you can see, currently there are 7,392 different facilities and individuals who offer their 3D printers out to people who want to get things 3D printed through 3D hubs. And I've already got an account here, as you can see, or created, so I can just click on Start Manufacturing. I want a 3D printing, and it'll take me in here. And the first thing we need to do is to select our 3D files. We're going to make sure we're working in the right units. We are created things in millimeters, so that's absolutely fine. And uh, there we are. There's our objects that we had previously. I'll bring those in. And uh, this bit always amazes me. It shouldn't, but it does, because this thing always tends to work. And you go, my object really exists, because I can see it in a different, different place, in a different package. Again, I'll uh, F11 the screen to give us a bit more space to work in. And you'll see it's brought in already uh, the, the baseboard there, and also the top of the object is, is down under there as well. Uh, they're here on the screen. We can spin around, have a look at them. And what it's doing at the moment is analysing whether these things are printable. It says that thing is printable. That's obviously very good. And uh, we can check that out. We can go to, for example, over here. We can look at, say, printability. And it'll tell us, if I just click it correctly, the wall thickness is OK. You shouldn't make things less than about one millimetre thick. Nothing here is less than about two millimetres thick. There's no intricate details that make it difficult to print. So that's, that's all fine. And uh, we'll just get rid of that back over there. How did that go back again? Oh, yes, we clicked that thing over there. And uh, one of the things I love about this display, you can bring in a banana, which just drops a banana in so we can see the, uh, the scale of it. And that, that looks about the right size relative to a banana. That can be quite important, actually, because if you've got and got, say, millimetres and metres confused in your scaling, things will be a very different size. So it's good to be able to bring in the banana. Anyway, there's that object. That's OK. This one looks OK as well. Again, uh, I do, do like this. There's all sorts of views you can use here. We can use a nice little X-ray view, which is really wacky. And I could play with 3D packages for hours, but don't worry, I won't. Anyway, there's our objects, and uh, we can select our material down here. Now, I'm going to print these into something called PLA, polylactic acid, a bioplastic. You're almost certainly going to want that, or maybe ABS if you want to use a non-bioplastic, depending on how environmentally friendly you're, you're feeling. And if we look down here, it's already come up with a price, which is uh, £6.19, what's that, about $8 or so. And we haven't done any advanced options. So I'll look down there. Process fused deposition modeling means material extrusion process, basically extruding a thermoplastic from a printhead. And the material here, we've got standard PLA. And uh, we can here pick the layer height. It is currently printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height. We could, for example, go to a 100, which will take longer to print, so the price I'm sure we'll go up. It has. I don't think we'll do that. that this is not going to be a, a massively accurate print in terms of a surface quality. It's a, a mount for a fan on a Raspberry Pi. But I will check get the colour, for example. I want to print this in red, I think, because that'll look rather better on screen. So we'll do that. And uh, there we are. In theory, we can print our two parts out for £6.19, plus, of course, some uh, postage and carriage on top of that. So there the parts are waiting to be printed. Let's click on Continue to check out. And uh, here we are, it's picked up uh, from previously where I am, what's going on. Um, it's going to deliver by first class mail. I could do a faster service I wanted or a slower, but I think that'll be fine. It's still not that bad a price to get a customised object for about £10. And in fact, I should point out that in certain places, depending on which hub you're using, you can actually go and collect things, but uh, you can't collect things obviously a long way away. If you stay in London or New York, you might find a hub very close to you for picking up your printing, not if you live maybe anywhere else. But uh, that's absolutely fine. The rest of this is very straightforward process. Describe my projects briefly. And that's fine. 
And now I just need to proceed to payment, fill in all those details I'm obviously not going to tell you about, and fairly soon we'll have our 3D printed Raspberry Pi mount. Well, here I am back again. As you can see, I've now got a parcel from uh, 3D Hubs. And uh, just to give you an idea of the timescales here, I uh, put my object together, I designed it in uh, Tinkercad on Sunday afternoon, I uploaded to 3D Hubs on a Sunday evening, I went online a few hours after that and saw it was already printing, and uh, I looked online on Monday morning and it had already been shipped. And it's now a Wednesday afternoon, so in less than three days I've gone from making design in Tinkercad to having this a parcel delivered. And I'm not saying it's always that fast, but it tends to be quite a speedy service you get from 3D Hub, at least on small 3D printed items. And I wanted to stress again why I like 3D Hubs, and I must say I've got nothing to do with the company whatsoever, but I just like it because of the model, the way that they link people who want to get things printed, here like me, to people who've got a 3D printer. And so this was printed by something called Steelman's Hub, run by a guy called John, I think it was, in Leicester, which is about, what, 25, 30 miles from here. Anyway, let's see what a John has achieved. I've got to stand him a knife and we can just cut in over there and I think under here as a well cuts across. There we are, cutting 3D hubs. And uh, is that opening? No. How do we get in? Oh, it goes in somehow. How on earth do you get into this box? Oh, it's a, it's a stock box, isn't it? I'm going to totally destroy the box to get in here, aren't I? Eventually, there we are finally got in. Whoa! Thank you for that. Thank you for choosing 3D hubs and learning how to get into a box. Obviously there's some paperwork there, there's a little thing about it. And this is what we wanted, wasn't it? This is our parts. And uh, oh, this looks like it's worked, doesn't it? Let's uh, get that thing out. This is very exciting, isn't it? This is a, there's a, one of the parts and uh, this is clearly the, um, the other part. This is, this is really good, isn't it? For, Amazing service. There we are, I've got that part as well. Let's put it down next to the other one and put them so you can see them over here. And uh, there we are. I'm very impressed. These look like the parts I, I designed. Now, of course, in addition to having the parts here, we wanted a few extra bits to actually make this work as a final product. I always think one of the best things about 3D printing is combining it with other types of parts. And to make this particular Raspberry Pi mount, we're also going to need some screws. Over here, you can hear them coming in. I've got some uh, M2 screws, these are 20mm M2 screws which will mount the Pi through these holes. And I've also got some uh, M3 screws, I think these are 12mm, that doesn't really matter to mount the fan with. And of course we've got the, uh, the fan itself, and of course we've got the, uh, the Raspberry Pi with its little heatsink which will mount on top of this thing something like, uh, like which way around is that? I can't remember, it's uh, one of these ways around. Anyway, I will now get on, it's that way around isn't it? That's how it fits on top of there. So I will now put this together, and by the magic of filmmaking, here we are, it's all been constructed, and uh, I think it's come out very well indeed, isn't it? I'm very pleased with this mount, but uh, in my excitement earlier, I forgot to uh, tell you I was gonna use another component in the bill, which is some sticky feet, which you can uh, see here, and these, uh, as you can see, are underneath in these little circular bits of the design. And in fact, I also got wrong the name of the guy from Stillman Hub who printed this. It was Simon, not John. And uh, other than that, I think this has been a very successful project, which is a rather nice mount for a Pi. There's a, a couple of things I got slightly wrong. One is the size of the screw holes for mounting the fan were absolutely dead on, absolutely right. But the, the screw holes I put in to uh, mount this onto the Pi itself, the ones you see here, which go obviously straight through, these were slightly tight, so I had to open those holes up slightly with a drill, so I would change that if I was doing this again. And also on the end here, um, well, are we the other end here? Which end here? This end here. You can see there's the micro SD card there, which will be slightly difficult to get out now. You can't get it out with pliers. I should have put a cutout of the design there. But overall, I'm very pleased with the result. This is a nicer Pi mount. And if you're thinking to yourself, uh, what's all this going on mounting a Pi uh, with, with a great big fan like that? Well, look in my video, Raspberry Pi 3 Plus Extreme Cooling. But anyway, we've now, I think, proved the point. You can use Tinkercad and 3D hubs to do some 3D printing even if you don't own a 3D printer. So there we are. We've seen how we can design something in Tinkercad and print it out using 3D hubs. 
And just before all of you ask in the comment section, have I shared the files that CAD for this object? Yes, I have. So if you do get yourself an account on Tinkercad, you can go and find this object, change it, do what you like with it. But I've also shared the files on a site called Thingiverse, which has got over a million files available for you to download and 3D print, now including this. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.